Hello, good day to you. Welcome to Issues and Answers. I am your host today, Peter Lewis, and today's program features the World Bank-sponsored Caribbean Regional Air Transport Connectivity Project. This is a World Bank-funded project which seeks to increase the resilience of our airport infrastructure I am very happy today that we have members of the Project Implementation Unit and they are going to give us some wonderful insight about this most exciting project. Greetings to you. Mm -hmm. yes. Mr. Mandesi, you are the Project Manager and uh, my, my first question to you is what is this Regional Air Transport Connectivity Project? Well, Mr. Lewis has a name implies it's a regional project with partner um, territories of Haiti and Grenada. The St. Lucia component is captured or in the government of St. Lucia and SLASPA's vision of a redevelopment of the HIA, Euronor International Airport, and the accompanying infrastructure. The Ministry of Finance is the um, low contracting agency. Mm -hmm. SLASPA is the implementation unit mm -hmm. and they have set up the PIU of which we are part to implement the project. Mm -hmm. The main obje objective of that component is the resilience and sustainability of the airfield and its attendant um, facilities such as the air rescue and firefighting services what we commonly call crash fire hall or the fire station there in. And it also has the rehabilitation and or reconstruction of the entire runway and Mr. Roth will give you some more details on that. It also involves a complete replacement of the navigation system, air ground lighting um, system, and also some institutional strengthening of SLASPA and the agencies in which it conducts business, for example, Department of Civil Aviation, Ministry of Ports, um, and ECA, Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation. So whatever linkages SLASPA has with those agencies as far as the runway and the, the supervision and the management of the runway, this project, we'll look at it and see how we can strengthen that project. Okay, thank you so very much for that, Welcome. Mr. Mondesi. You've definitely set us on a good platform. So I turn my attention to Mr. Johannes Roth, who is the airport infrastructure specialist. So, um, runway infrastructure upgrade, what, what can we envision that to be? So, um, Mr. Lewis, the runway is the most important single component of the airport, right? Mm -hmm. um, if there isn't a runway, there isn't an airport. <laughs> And so the runway at Uenora International is, is fairly old. Um, it's got a long history going back over 80 years, but um, most recently, about 30 years ago, it was extended. Um, and that's a long time for um, a runway to be in operation. So it's time, times have changed, um, dimensions are different these days, aircraft are different. So there are a number of changes that have to be made to make this runway compliant to um, the standards that we have nowadays. Um, in addition to that, the runway itself is um, well worn out, so it okay. needs um, more than just a little bit of a repair. Um, it's, it's being repaired, obviously, to be kept in operation, but it's time now to intervene and to do some major work to the runway. Um, that would include um, potentially um, reconstructing parts of the pavement, um, maybe substantial overlays of areas, drainage on the sides of the runway will have to be reconstructed, culverts rebuilt, um, and then the, the strip, the, um, the green grassy bits around the runway, that needs to be widened um, to be compliant. 
Um, and then all of this has to be done in such a way that it um, accounts for the greater amounts of rainfall that we're having these days. Um, this goes back to the resilience part of the, um, of the project. Oh, that, that, that's quite that's quite a bit. Uh, and from from what from my memory of what it is, you're talking about the airfield versus the terminal. The terminal is the building, and the airfield is the runway and everything outside of Correct. the building on the, what you call it, what the sterile side. Right. Uh, the air side. Well, yes, it's. Uh, I mean, it's it's. We call it the air side, mm -hmm. um, and um, it's it's sterile to a degree. Yes, of course it is because access is is um, is controlled. Um, but it's everything basically where the aircraft themselves operate. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so very much for that. So we had two of the gentlemen speak, and we have a lady in our midst. And welcome, um, Mrs. Shirlyn Simmons James, and she's the environmental and social specialist. This is a long term, but I yes, want to make is. sure I get it right. So um, we're talking about construction, we're talking about new and um, making things better. How does the environmental and social side in terms of your portfolio, how does that fit in? Well, before we go into exactly that part of it, I want to give a little bit of a brief synopsis of what the ESF is. Um, the World Bank has begun implementation of an environment and social framework, uh -huh. um, also known as the ESF, and that started in 2018. Mm -hmm. And it's for all funded uh, projects, investments by the bank. It protects people, it protects environment. Mr. Mondesi spoke a little bit about it earlier. It also looks to increase capacity and capacity building of institutions and agencies. Um, any investment the bank puts in is country driven. So as St. Lucians, we take responsibility and ownership of the project and, and as well, it speaks to transparency, accountability, and most importantly, it emphasizes public participation. So it's very key that not just environment, people and environment, but getting the views of people on project activities. So, so it is a, a more holistic approach. It is a holistic approach. Yes, it's not just taking one component, but looking at people, because people are an integral part of environmental management. And it's key to get their views, it, it's key to protect them, and it's key to ensure the involvement they have in activities um, that, especially the bank, promotes in their projects. Okay, so so that's part of the World Bank development agenda in terms yes. of how, how it does its business. It wonderful, does. wonderful. I, I, I go back to the, to the project lead in, in Mr. Mondesi here. So Mr. Mondesi, we, we've gotten the, the what. What are the expected outcomes? What, what, what are, do we hope to achieve by engaging this project? Okay, so we hinted essentially that it's an old runway. Mm -hmm. quote unquote. There are new aircrafts coming on the scene, some that we know now. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow they will not be flying into St. Lucia. Is what we can do with our infrastructure to accommodate that changing environment. Mm -hmm. And so we speak to the resilience and sustainability. Sustainability and resilience not only from an operational perspective, but also where climate change is uh, concerned. The buzzword. We would have um, appreciated in the last couple of years that when it rains, we have heavier rainfall, we have more intense rainfall, and how does our infrastructure um, stand up, withstand, or is quickly brought back into use after an event? We have the coastline and wave action increasing, and so that inundates or encroaches on the runway, on the eastern end of our runway. We need to ensure that our runway can withstand or brought back into use as quickly as possible should an event occur. It's going to be a very challenging project for the simple reason that we cannot close the runway. Mm. So this work has to be done in flight windows and that means that we open for flights and then at a certain point we close down right. and then the contractors move in. So it's going to be about six to seven years of work, intense work. There are going to be some disruptions, and we are going to ensure that our stakeholders are informed. We are going to ensure that our infrastructure is resilient and sustainable and can accommodate any um, future events 
or whatever the flying aviation sector in terms of aircraft requirements that is compliant and it can be um, operational. Operational. Sorry. Okay. All right. So, so in terms of keeping in touch with our stakeholders and so forth, mm -hmm. I can. I'm going back to to Mrs. James. So, keeping in touch with our stakeholders and. Uh, Somebody will ask, who, who are these stakeholders? I mean, you're talking about an airport, you're talking about works. Who, who are we really seeking to, to, to speak to in terms of stakeholders at the, in terms of such a project? When you think of the airport and the airport sector, it's a wide range of stakeholders. Mm -hmm. You have persons, you have the service providers, mm -hmm. you have persons, uh, you have the community, uh, you have residents, you have persons at the airport who do business within the operation of the airport. So it's a broad sec it's a broad it's a broad spectrum of, of persons. Um, private sector, NGOs, CBOs, and we don't want to exclude anybody. T technically, it's everybody because everybody will utilize the airport at some point in time. So there will be a, there will be some there will be some involvement or some interaction with the airport from our general stakeholders. So the genesis of this is to reach out to every single person. You have you have persons that are very close to the activities around the airports. So initially, you'd want to get those persons involved first, have discussions with them, present the project to them, get feedback from them, and how this may impact them and then we devise different methods and different modes of reaching our pals our public at large as you refer to them uh, so there are different modes like and different that. activities of meeting our stakeholders and as I mentioned earlier key to implementation of any World Bank project is to have stakeholder engagement the World Bank has 10 standards and the last standard standard 10 speaks to stakeholder engagement and information disclosure so part of this project throughout has been involving our stakeholders. We've met with civil society, we've met with technical agencies within the government of St. Lucia, we've met with various agencies within government, statutory agencies of government, we have presented the project to them, we've gotten their feedback, and we're keeping them abreast of information as the project evolves. And that is a genesis of how this, how this project team um, sees implementation of of the CADCOR project. It's okay. country driven, okay. country ownership, okay. and that is our genesis. I, I, I like something you said, and she spoke of um, PALS, public at large, which includes us. So, right here on Issues and Answers, the St. Lucian public, you got it first. So, stay tuned with us as we continue to delve a little deeper into this most exciting undertaking. Tourism brings wealth to the nation. Do your part with green innovation. Opportunities for all the competition. St. Lucia number one in the region. Embrace the culture, don't deplete. Community starts with we. Let's keep the natural beauty of streets at we see. Hey, show the world what we create. Tourism with there, we celebrate. Sustainable and green, we call it. Yeah. Educate yourself and participate. Participate in the week of activities for Tourism Week, September 24th to the 30th. Welcome back, and remember we're here with the members of the Project Implementation Unit for the Caribbean Regional Air Transport Connectivity Project. Now, this project is a project of the World Bank uh, in collaboration with the Government of St. Lucia through the Ministry of Finance. However, the implementing agency is the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, SLASPA. So, we were having some exciting discussion, and for you, our pals, meaning our public at large, Thank you so very much for that, Mrs. James. I'm going to stick yeah. to that. Um, Mr. Johannes, we were talking about resilience. I heard talk of the, the, the fire hall or the fire station on the airport, which is what I know it at. What exactly is the aim here, and what are we trying to achieve? So um, we have, uh, as you said, a fire station on the airport. Um, the airport airfield rescue and firefighting services. Um, it's it's a, a very important part of um, the safe operation of an airfield. Um, there are a number of um, um, fire tenders there and um, there are also there's also personnel that's stationed in that in that building. Um, and what, what it has to do is whenever there's operations on the airfield um, there are people in the control room of that fire station that are observing 
what's happening on the airfield so that they can respond to any fire, explosion, whatever it is, um, within a matter of a few minutes. Um, and up to now, the, uh, the fire station at Huonora has had a control room which is at ground level, um, which doesn't afford full view of the airfield. So what we are doing as part of CATCOP is we are going to um, construct a control tower, an elevated control room, so that the uh, duty officers can actually have a full view of the entire airfield at all times. In addition to that, um, we are expanding the fire station. Um, we're constructing a training room uh, because you'll appreciate that um, firefighters need constant training to stay um, on top of developments and just to keep just to keep current with their knowledge. And so we need a training room for that. Um, they were a little bit uh, short on accommodations. There are additional rooms being built. Um, and then last but not least, we're also installing um, some water tanks so that we can actually um, store additional water. We haven't had that in the past. This time we're going to put 30,000 gallons of storage at the fire station. Um, we're going to use rainwater harvesting from the roof of the training center uh, to keep those tanks full. Oh, that's... So it's sounding like that would be the place to work very soon. <laughs> very soon, yes, very soon. <laughs> um, I, 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 cannot, I cannot help but, but go back to, to Mrs., uh, Mrs. James because you spoke of um, speaking with stakeholders. So is there, you said, speak to us, we speak to you. So if this project is going on and I have a concern, um, do I just come to you? I, I just address you, I say to you, um, I don't like the fact that this is making too much noise or, or there's too much dust or something. What exactly happens? Uh, there is an established grievance redress mechanism um, that will take into account exactly what you spoke of. Someone having a concern um, as it relates to the activities of the project affecting them. So we call them a project affected person. And so what it is is that this individual will contact the project implementation unit. And there is a process by which this information is, 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 is recorded, is investigated, it is um, resolved. Um, and there are various steps to which this person can submit that information. They can do it to the PIU, the project implementation unit, via mm -hmm. email. Mm -hmm. They can do it by telephone. Fax machines still exist, so okay. they can do it by fax. It can also be done in person. But importantly, if someone wants to remain anonymous in this process by just to give information of a concern, that can, can, that can be done anonymously. Oh, nice. And there is a process by which, like I mentioned, um, this issue can be addressed. So there are three tiers to our grievance redress mechanism. The first tier is addressed within the PIU. Um, so the, the issue is investigated and addressed within the project implementation unit. Secondly, there's a grievance redress committee, and then that, that is further elevated. If the issue cannot be resolved at that first level, the PIU, it is then elevated to the, uh, the grievance redress committee. Okay. The, person, the individual is brought in. If the individual wants to remain anonymous, then it is resolved at that level. Um, all documentation is, all information is taken, documented, presented to the committee, and then if no resolution um, happens at that point, that's a second tier, mm -hmm. we have a third, third quasi fourth tier. Okay. Um, that third tier is with the GM, the general manager of SLASPA. And if it cannot be resolved at that level, but we hope at some point yes. <laughs> the issues get resolved very quickly, um, there is that fourth tier of the legal system. And we're really hoping that none of our issues or the, the concerns of the project affected persons actually reach to the court level. We're hoping that all issues can be addressed um, and amicably and the res resolution can be favorable for both parties. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. But the mere fact that that exists, uh, that's, that's a bit transformational yes. for, for us in terms of our, our projects. So thank you so very much for that. But Mr. Mr. Roth spoke of this, this upgrade for the, for the Air fire rescue. Yeah, it's kind of long, but <laughs> when exactly can we see that happen, Mr. Mondesi? When when the when the work start on that and, and 
what level are we at? Well, we can say it has started. Okay. The contractor is mobilizing, mm. and within a week or two, they will be on site. They're already on island, um, and um, they have commenced operations. We have in some kickoff meetings this week, meeting with our stakeholders to inform them of the start of this, this project, introducing them to the the staff of the contractor, mm -hmm. ensuring that we're in compliance with the regulations of SLASPA because it's part of that sterile area right. where security levels are um, higher than normal mm -hmm. and they have to be um, in conformity with those levels. So we have started and work will begin within a week or two on site. Oh, nice, yeah. nice, nice. But, but Mr. Mr. Roth spoke, to, to me Mr. Roth is dealing with all the exciting things, <laughs> the things that even I, you know, as a, as a child growing up, you know, all these, he said about lighting, you spoke about the strip itself. So can we, can we imagine a reconfiguration of what we see now? Uh, it, it's not going to be a reconfiguration per se. Um, the runway um, is where it is and it's where it's always going to be. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll appreciate that you know, flat land of that sort of size is, is at a premium and they, we're not going to put it anywhere else. Right. Um, we're going to put seven and a half meter shoulders down each side, paved shoulders, mm -hmm. which we haven't had before. So that means the runway will then be a total of 60 meters wide instead of 45. Um, but it'll be exactly where it is now. Um, the designs are, are not yet done. Um, the consultants are working on, on the analysis uh, right now, um, and we may have to extend the runway um, a little bit to the west, um, but obviously that would come at a very high cost, so if at all possible, we'd avoid that. Um, but by and large, it'll stay where it is. The strip itself um, is, um, 150 meters wide um, at the moment, so 75 either side of the, of the center line of the runway. Um, it has to go to 280 total width. Mm -hmm. So there will be some work further out. Um, in fact, the whole of the strip will, will require regrading to facilitate the drainage, um, effective drainage, because the idea will be to get the water off the runway more quickly. No. Um, there has been, as you know, um, a bit of ponding that takes place during heavy rain events and it's one of the project objectives to minimize that um, and to do that we'd have to do some reprofiling of the existing strip. All right, just, just in you saying that um, um, Mr. Roth, I can, I can imagine we are working towards a f newer and better runway facility and, 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 and that in itself is, is great. I, I, I would like to, to let our, our pals, meaning the public at large, and um, know that we are here speaking with the Project Implementation Unit, members of the Project Implementation Unit for the Caribbean Regional Air Transport Connectivity Project, the St. Lucia edition, and it is a regional project um, sponsored by the World Bank. And we will continue, we hope to have you here with us pretty often as the project proceeds. You said it is a seven-year project and to get as much information as possible but um, in, in moving, um, Mrs. Mrs. James, um, your closing words, what would you, what would you like people to, to know and how would you like them to embrace this project? I just want persons to know that they are considered in, in the implementation of this project, um, not just the beneficiaries um, of the project. The workers are considered in this project um, their concerns will be heard in this project, and so it's not an exclusion of people and environment or putting favoritism on either one. Okay. Um, both will be considered, the protection of persons, the protection of environment, and keeping them informed, um, and their inclusion and their participation. So it's that involvement that we want persons to know that you, will be, you are a part of this project, not, may not be there physically, but you are considered in the project. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Roff, um, your parting words, what, can, what, is, what is your hope for, for the project? Well, I think it's a fantastic project. Um, I, I mean, it's timely. We have to fix this runway now. Um, but I'm really looking forward to getting into it and getting that done. I think, um, realistically speaking, um, 
other than the construction of the fire station, the, the physical work on the ground will, will probably start next year uh, because it will take all of this year to do the designs and get the requisite approvals right. and, 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 and regulatory approvals as well. But um, it will be a good project. It, it's Time is now. <laughs> okay, good, right. good, good stuff. And Mr. Paul Mondesi, uh, the project, project manager, not coordinator. Thank you for that. Um, your part in Woods. Um, there's a lot more to the project than what we would have said here. Mm -hmm. um, and you are coming back? And we're coming back. <laughs> All right. Um, there is a whole new air navigation system that we're putting in, mm -hmm. um, in conjunction with the government of St. Lucia. Doesn't say that this project will not have any disruptions. Mm -hmm. While we reach out to stakeholders, we try to mitigate risks on this project. There will be inconveniences. There will be things that happen that we have no control, given the magnitude of this project. Mm -hmm. For me, most interesting on this project is what the PIU has been able to accomplish in terms of capacity building mm -hmm. of our local um, let's say St. Lucian people. Mm -hmm. Let's give you two scenarios. Mm -hmm. One, we did our topograph topographical survey mm -hmm. using drones, mm -hmm. and there was a sensitization to land surveyors, those in the Ministry of Planning, to how you use that technology. Ah, wonderful. We're going to be using what they call a falling weight deflectometer. Mm -hmm. It came all the way from, from Colombia to do some geotechnical studies and we're going to invite engineering association, others to see how that technology. So there's this capacity building associated with this project where we can transfer knowledge and technology to our local citizenry. And I'm very excited about that. The team has been working to ensure that this is done and there'll be other opportunities going forward for similar interactions. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So thank you so very much for being with us. And thank you so very much, viewers, for staying with us on Issues and Answers. Uh, remember that it is the Caribbean Regional Air Transport Connectivity Project, uh, sponsored by the World Bank, um, with in collaboration with the government of St. Lucia for the Ministry of Finance, and implemented by the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority. Um, we hope to invite our panelists back as we keep you up to date with this ever in s exciting updates. All the best.